thanks for returning to watch episode 2 of Comparing Dante's Inferno. Special thanks to my two reviewers for their input on the first episode. Now let's recap on what's happened so far. In the first episode, I covered the two DLCs and the beginning of the game. Dante has just returned from war, where he fought under corrupt leaders and slaughtered a questionable amount of prisoners. After that, he denied his final hour by killing Death himself and taking his scythe. The story of the poem has begun, but takes a backseat while we develop a bit more of the game's character. This game contains nudity that will be censored to keep YouTube off my back. The bishop said our cause was holy. Holy had nothing to do with it. After three years of the cold hatred with which that savage war fed itself, I longed for the warmth of my devoted Beatrice, for the chance to redeem the past, to start again. In reality, Dante had only ever met Beatrice twice, but was completely enthralled by her. She married and had children with another man while Dante almost obsessively admired her from afar. His love for her was so great that it inspired him to write poems in her memory after she died at the age of 24. In the comedy she is and always was placed in paradise, only coming down to limbo to ask Virgil to guide Dante. Her soul is never kidnapped by Satan. Why, Dante? Why did you break your promise? I don't understand! <gasps> the beast has turned me back. Help me before my pulse and veins tremble. By all that is holy. I vow to forsake all pleasures of the flesh until I return from this noble crusade. I gave myself to you because I know you will be faithful to our love. Mercenaries of Florentina, in payment for taking the cross to reclaim the Holy Land, your immaculate father hereby absolves you of all your sins. Now, as the game progresses along, Dante finally descends to hell through the doors of a church that gets swallowed by a pit. If we ignore Dante's homecoming and go right back to the forest, he had just met Virgil. 
Dante expresses fear towards the journey he is about to undertake, but Virgil gives him some words of encouragement, and they proceed through the vestibule into hell. In the game, the vestibule seems to be represented by the crumbling church, which could also be a metaphor for why Dante's soul is unknowingly damned. Game Dante proceeds down the cliff, fighting the shades of hell, until he finally meets Virgil, and the two versions of this story finally start to coincide. Have pity on me, whatever you are. A lady called. I prayed for her to command me. Beatrice. I fear my friend has gone astray, she said. Help him, Virgil, so that he may come to me. I am Beatrice, and when I am finally before my lord, I will praise you to him. Poet, I beg you, give me strength. I will deliver her from this fate, whatever the cost. Dante finally meets Virgil, and Virgil explains that upon seeing Beatrice, he begged her to be commanded. The conversation was much lengthier between the two spirits, but what's important is summed up here in the game. One may wonder at what point was Beatrice able to ask this of Virgil when she's been taken by Lucifer, but this is an action game, so let's not think too hard about it. In the poem, this conversation is had in the forest before they enter hell, but the walls of a chasm are close enough, I suppose. <laughs> Descended. Put all fear and cowardice aside. We have come to the cliffs above Acheron. Wretched souls walk this tortured path to board Karen's vessel. shown Dante climbing on and the walls he'll climb on from here on out are actually the cages of the damned of this circle. We haven't yet entered the first circle so these damned are actually in the vestibule of the indecisive. Those who did nothing in life, good or evil, pursue a banner while insects pick at them and drink their blood. Karen has nine lines to his introduction stating who he is, what he does, and his immortality. However, he does not speak them. Instead, they are written across the ledge of the gate. In the game, he only reads three of them. All souls that die from every nation collect here as one. Karen's rough crossing awaits those who did not fear the Lord. <laughs> I vow to forsake all pleasures of the flesh till I return from this noble crusade. I gave myself to you because I know you will be faithful to our love. <laughs> you should have been true to this sweet young thing. Instead, it's me who gets the prize. Let her go. She's innocent. Not for long. I belong to him now. You've only yourself to blame. Holy warrior. You don't deserve such a faithful, pious young lady. <laughs> Stand 
aside from those that are dead. Where is Beatrice? She made a very foolish wager. Take me to her! My life! My soul for her return! You fool. Those belong to us. Already. Now the final crossing. Now I bury you. The cold, the eternal, everlasting darkness. Karen is not in fact the boat itself. In the poem, it is a simple fairy driven by an ancient looking ferryman with eyes like fire, which as you just saw was taken quite literally in his game design. Karen tells Dante that he can't board because he still lives, but Virgil assures him that Dante may board and cross the river of Acheron. Your immaculate father hereby absolves you of all your sins! Is it true he can absolve our sins without confession? Would a bishop lie? Promise me, you will protect Francesco. You will protect Francesco. Promise me. Promise me. I will protect your brother like he is my own. While there is mention of a Francesco in the poem, that is only because it is a common name. A brother of Beatrice is not mentioned, and this is just added to enhance the plot of the game. This will happen again with numerous mention of family members and actions of game Dante. to the circles below. The theme of this game is killing everyone that stands in Dante's way, but I think it goes without saying that Dante doesn't kill anyone in the comedy, nor does he actually cross on Karen's ferry. He is hit by a gust of wind and passes out. He then awakes on the next shore. Dante sees a number of historical shades before coming to a castle, which I think somewhat influenced a bit of this level's design. Divine power made me Limbo is actually the circle that Virgil resides in. It's the circle for those who have not sinned but did not accept God. That includes everyone before the belief of God and even babies that died before they were baptized. Eventually they meet King Minos. The unblessed infants. Baptism they did not have. The one gate to the true faith was never shown to these newborn souls. Limbo shows no mercy for these babes. Saladin, the legendary Kurd who reclaimed the holy city, from whom even the brave Lionheart could not wrest it back. The forces of Saladin are routed. Dante, do you hear me? We have taken the city. Violence! Next time we confront King Minos, who decides to which circle of hell a shade will go. That will be the end of Limbo, and we'll enter the second circle of hell, Lust. 
Thanks for watching and please tune in next time.